coffee machine is amazing and beatboxes. Watch this. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Tonight we are going to learn about setup, teardown, and fixtures. Fixtures are a way to create things in a very controlled environment. So for example, we don't know what this stuff down here is doing. And in larger code bases, it would create other things and it would modify these things because they're stateful. And we're not really sure. So in tests, we want to create things in nice isolated environments and then test them. So we're going to do the same thing today with setup because... We're going to do multiple things on these stateful things and we want to create it one time because sometimes creating it takes a lot of work. Let's create a new describe here within our existing person describe. And we'll call this the attack. So the attack is the most probably involved method in this and requires a lot. It does a roll, an attack roll, does some kind of addition here. It clamps the numbers to make sure it's only between one and 20, regardless of what the, these numbers actually produce. It could be a good or it could be a hack around this, who knows. And some additional arithmetic. And bottom line, it basically just means, look, if your target is a lot of armor or very agile, does a lot of pinion X and parkour, hard to hit. Vice versa, if you're extremely strong, you're probably more likely to hit. This affects that. To test this, we have to create a bunch of persons in a certain state and make sure that they end in a particular state. So we gotta verify their initial state. And the easiest way to do that is to create them inside of the unit test, what we call a fixture. It is a known quantity. It is us creating it. Easiest way to do that is actually copy what they did. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna copy this. We use something called before each, before each unit test, it'll run this function. And then after each, after each function, it'll do this. What do we need? We need a person to exist for every single one of these unit tests. We're gonna create a person. You can use let or var, I don't care, but you cannot use const because this is gonna die and be mutated on purpose, which is awful, I know. For each, we're gonna create this leather armor and short sword and create a person. The problem is we need two. So this isn't really gonna work. So let's create person A, person B, and then create a nice little function for us. Create person fixture and let's make the name parameterized what is in the name any game of thrones fans out there i'm one so name and we'll return this person from this person fixture now we can get rid of this insanity and say person a is create person fixture, person A is your name, person B, your own personal fixture, someone to unit test, sorry, like Depeche Mode, create person fixture, person B, and what do you do after each unit test? Clean up your mess, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, only you can prevent mutable state. Now, last two steps is the ability to use these classes means they need to be exported. So we will go to the bottom, continue on our stealthy export path of armor and weapon, scroll to the top of our test and import those guys, armor, weapons, all at your disposal. Let's only describe only since we're going to do a significant amount of testing here. Rerun the test, make sure we didn't break anything. So far, so good. We imported classes, we didn't break, but there's no test run because we have no tests. So let's verify the initial hit points or the initial state of these fixtures just to prove that we are testing them in isolation and they are in fact known quantities. How do we know they're known? Well, we have unit tests to prove it as such. Person A's. Oh, see, this is what happens when you use single quotes. You can't have fun with words and contractions. Person A's hit points starts at 12, I think. I don't know, it's plus constitution or something. I don't know. Let's use a unit test to figure it out. Person A hit points should equal 12. Rerun the unit test, and our first one should fail. It actually equals 11. Cool, so we kind of made the test fail at first. 
That's right, his constitution is one. That's why. All right, let's rerun it again now that you've corrected it. Cool, change the wording. Let's copy pasta coding for the win. And make sure that person B also equals that. So we can prove that even with basic code, it's impossible to screw up. Well done. Person A and person B both start with 11, so we know how they start. Now notice that we have two tests that use these variables, and at the end of each test, they're deleted. So they're recreated and deleted. And the last step for these two guys that we want to verify for their initial state is that the armor bonus is completely worthless because up here, we figured out zero is what the default is because Home Slice had a state error when he created it, or she. So what we're going to do is verify that the initial armor bonus is in fact zero. Person A's armor bonus is zero. We're going to do the exact same thing for person B. Person B, person A, bonus, armor bonus should equal zero. Sadly, let's make sure that we know that that's not intentional <laughs> and it's bad. If you're more tactful than I am, you would use some kind of positive connotation about improving yourself through coding and failing and having people like you. I'm not in that kind of mood tonight. So we're going to do this. Now, the reason why these fixtures are wonderful is look at this. We have a nice little function to create it, one line of code to delete it, one line of code to test each of our tests. We have very readable unit tests here, very simple. They test one thing, very minute. Now we can run them. And there you go. We've got the initial state that's good enough for a basic battle. A quick review, person A and person B are stateful variables. Before each unit test, we create them. After each, we delete them. So we have these nice controlled test fixtures. We verify their initial state so we know that they are known quantities. They're not some weird thing from over here that could be affecting it. We've created it ourselves in a nice safe environment within this describe. And it'll create it, run a unit test, delete it. Then run this unit test, it'll create it, run this unit test, delete it. Create it, run this unit test, then delete it. Over and over and over. So even if they both affect both person A and person B, we can guarantee that each unit test is a fresh new copy in a known state. That is set up and tear down. In this case, before each and after each using test fixtures.